sure that when making sure that when this ilm comes, it's not mixing with a diseased heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this example when he says, وَإِذَا أُنزِلَتْ فَإِذَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةً فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ أَيُّكُمْ زَادَتْهُ هَذِهِ إِمَانًا And when a surah comes down, the, some of the believers would say what? أَيُّكُمْ Which one of you زَادَتْهُ Increased them in إيمانة, in Iman. Like, who increased their Iman with this surah? Whose Iman went up with this new surah that just came down? That's what the Sahaba used to ask. Right? فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَتْهُمْ رِجْسًا إِلَى رِجْسِهِمْ As for the ones who have Iman, have pure hearts, are ready to be recipients of ilm, when it comes down, it increases them in ilm. Okay? The same way, when there's a pure cup, you pour more water in it, it's going to increase in water. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ As for the ones that have diseases in their hearts, not diseases like, uh, you know, cholesterol and all that. We're not talking about that. We need to get that out of our system. We're talking about diseases that corrupt every action, every deed that we do. Envy, jealousy, uh, greed, arrogance, spite, all of these diseases completely corrupt art. So when the surah comes down, what happens? It only, it only does what? فَزَادَتْهُمْ رِجْسًا إِلَى رِجْسٍ It makes them more diseased. It makes them more diseased. Imagine this cup. This cup is half full with this contaminated water. It's zamzam, it's pure. Right? And then, on top of the zamzam, there's extra fine honey. But mixed with those two is what? Is some burnt car oil. It's half a cup. The second half, is it clean? Like the one that's untouched? Yeah, it's still clean. There's nothing on the glass. That glass is clean. But when you pour more water in it, what happens? Even the clean glass becomes dirty from the contaminated Oil. And this is the example of the heart when it is filled with knowledge before it is purified. Hence we say purification comes before ilm, comes before fiqh, comes before any type of uloom that a person attains. We cannot just study opinions in fiqh and, and, and the aqeedah and ilm al-hadith and usul and then a person goes to the jami'ah and, and studies for eight years and mashallah is a master of Arabic language, a master of fiqh, does our, and then what? There are still things that were never cleaned in the process. You tell me, Akhi, did you ever study tazkiyah? He's like, yeah, wallahi, akhi, I'm not Sufi. You know, I'm not going to go out and, like, akhi, who said it's limited to a group? Why you have to label things? There's no label. This tazkiyah is for mu'min. If you're a believer, you need to believe in tazkiyat al-nafs, right? Every believer has to, right? And you see, sometimes shaitan makes us use these labels to make us, to get us away from what benefits us. Like you go to somebody who's only into tazkiyah. You tell him, ya akhi, your salah is wrong. Your wudu is wrong. Your dhikr, the way you're doing it, ya akhi, where did you study this? Where did you learn this? This is, uh, this is all innovations and khuzabalat, where you bring it. It's like, yeah, I'm not Salafi, you know, I don't, I don't study. Who said fiqh is for Salafis? Who said studying aqeed is for Salafis? These names are, are heavily exploited by shaitan to deter us from seeking beneficial knowledge. Right or wrong? Do you see that happening? All the time. All the time. Yani why? Yani imagine... Yeah, and this is what shaitan does. Imagine you have pure honey in the market. This honey, does honey have shifa? Does it cure the, the illnesses in the stomach? It cures. Fihi shifa. Allah said fihi shifa. There's the purest honey. Shaitan is smarter than to say, I mean, let me wash this honey out 
and pour. The shaitan is trying to think of an effective way to stop you from getting this honey. You know what he does? He just puts another label on it. <laughs> it's like, oh, he says this is, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z. That's completely puts you off. It's, it's, uh, let's say something truthful. So we're not saying lying because shaitan is smarter than to, to make honey, to put a label that's not honey. He'll say this is the vomit of the bee. And that's exactly what it is, right? <laughs> honey is bee vomit. But when you see bee vomit, you're like, ew, like, what's this bee vomit stuff? Give me some honey, right? But he'll put it on it and he'll deter you. Right? Madhan wa dhamman wa ma jawazta wasfahuma. Wal haqqu qad ya'tarihi su'u ta'biri. Like the, the, the poet said. So sometimes you're, 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 you're say, Jana nahl or qay'u zanabir. You know, you could say the, the, the vomit of the bee or you could say the product of, of, of the bee. Right? One sounds good, one sounds bad. So you see how shaitan plays games on us. Tayyib. Now, here, another thing, I just want to read some of what the, the Mu'allif, rahimahullah, the author said, that we didn't mention last week. He said, Wa'lam, here fi fasil, fi alim lam yanfa'ahu alim. Now we have uh, the muta'allim. We have the muta'allim. And we have the alim. He said, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْمُنَاظَرَ الْمَوْضُوعَ لِقَصْدِ الْمُغَالَبَةِ وَالْمُبَاهَاتِ مَنْبَعُ الْأَخْلَاقِ الْمَذْمُومَةِ Here, he's talking about the person who receives knowledge. Okay, and corruption has been, you know, there's a disease in the heart along with this knowledge. And he's talking about the type of person that has knowledge, but there is something in the heart. So he said that the person that receives this type of knowledge is extremely infatuated with debating. Why? Because he said, وَلَا يَسْلَمُ صَاحِبُهَا مِنْ كِبْرٍ He's like, there, it's impossible for someone who is infatuated and obsessed with debating to free their heart from arrogance in the sense that I'm better than that person. I'm more knowledgeable. I'm more intellectual. And then he says, فَهُوَ يَذْهَبُ عُمْرُهُ فِي الْعُلُومِ الَّتِي تُعِينَ عَلَى الْمُنَاظَرَةِ مِمَّا لَا يَنْفَعُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ كَحُسْنِ اللَّفْظِ وَحِفْظِ النَّوَادِرِ so this person who cares about debates, they start with seeking beneficial knowledge and then as they start getting into debating, they start learning the logic of debating. They start learning the way to present their information. They start learning the way to articulate the point more than the ilm itself. More than the ilm itself, hence corrupting the knowledge. So you see how just a dot, the same way, you put one tablespoon of the burnt oil, the burnt car oil, in a cup of zamzam, you won't drink it. See, there's just a little bit of arrogance in a person. Just a little bit. And they have massive amounts of knowledge, but it corrupts it. Subhanallah. And now he says, He says, باب آداب المعلم والمتعلم وآفات العلم وبيان علماء السوء وعلماء الآخرة Now this one is another chapter and I'm briefly just going through certain chapters. I'm not, uh, I'm not reading the book and I'm not going in depth in it either. I'm just giving you some uh, points so that we know what the point of the author is. He says, this chapter is the mannerisms of seeking knowledge and the manners that are a scholar should have with their uh, students and a student should have with, their, with the scholar. So he says, أَمَّا المتعلم فينبغي له تقديم طهارة النفس على رذائل الأخلاق ومذموم الصفات Just like we mentioned. 
the mutaallim, the one who's studying, needs to focus on their tahara, purifying the cup, because their cup is main, mostly empty. So before they even think of filling it, they have to put it in the dishwasher. That's what he's basically saying. وَيَنْبَغِي لَهُ قَطْعُ الْعَلَائِقِ الشَّاغِلَ The second thing they have to do is cut off anything that distracts them. الْعَلَائِقِ الشَّاغِلَ There's so much that distracts us, ya jama'ah. So much in this world. Yani, we cannot truly receive knowledge, what the author is saying, we cannot truly receive knowledge if our brain is scattered. We're thinking of this, and we're thinking of that. We're reading a book, but my mind is on my business. My mind is on this family. My mind is on what my neighbor is doing. My mind is what they're doing, what's happening in the news. My mind, you can't. And that's why you find a correlation between proper students of knowledge and lack of inshigal in a particular place. So like, you know, they asked some of the scholars of Mauritania, what is the secret to your students memorizing so much more than the rest of the world. And the scholar said, it's the desert. The Sahara, the desert. He said, why? How, how is it the desert? He said, there's nothing to distract us. So we learn. But when you're going, let's say you go to the Azhar. How many of you guys been to the Azhar? MashaAllah, the Azhar has great scholars. I don't know how they do it. Just driving to the Azhar from somewhere, like Medinat Nasr or something, like, you, yani you cannot think of anything except for the road, right? There's no way you can, re, re, like, you know, take your focus off the road and this person is fighting and this person's trying to cut through and this person's crossing the street and you're just, it's like a battle to try to get to school. You know, you see how this tashattut? But imagine this great scholar, you put him in a place where there's no inshigal, just desert. Subhanallah. And that's the beauty of قطع العلائق الشاغلة. He said, فإن الفكرة متى توزعت قصرت عن إدراك الحقائق. And this is so deep. He said, because if you're unable to focus on what you are learning and deeply think of it, you will miss the essence of this ilm that you're receiving. Like it won't impact you. You might memorize it. You might know it. You might remember the points and the breakdown, but it will not, you will not experience the depth of it because you're just too busy, scattered. So we need to cut the scattering. So he says, وَعَلَى الْمُتَعَلِّمْ أَنْ يُلْقِي زِمَامَهُ إِلَى الْمُعَلِّمْ إِلْقَاءِ الْمَرِيضِ زِمَامَهُ إِلَى الطَّبِيبِ He said the way, he said, فَيَتَوَاضَعْ لَهُ وَيُبَالِغْ فِي خِدْمَتِهِ he said, and the way the learner has to be with the teacher is the way the sick person is with the doctor. You see how the doctor, when you go to the doctor, and I was just with a doctor right now, he'll probably prove this point, point wrong, right? <laughs> so he said, you have to submit. If the doctor tells you, you know, you have to take this medicine, we need to do this surgery, we need to do X, Y, and Z, do we always cut off the doctor? You're sick, you're like, but, but, but doctor, wait, wait. Uh, I read on Google that that's not my diagnosis. You know, wallahi, subhanAllah, you know, some people do that. You know, they go to the doctor in the emergency room. They're like, oh, what do you have? And the person starts self-diagnosing themselves. You see, see, I have some redness here. And I read a few articles on Google, and I think I have strep throat. So if you just give me some antibiotics. And, like, look, I give you whatever you want. But it's not Google that's going to get sued if they prescribe something wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's me. So, so the doctor has to experience their knowledge, right? It's, it's, that's why they're a doctor and that's why they're there, right? So, um, but sometimes when we go to a doctor, we're just, we submit to their experience and their knowledge, right? They didn't go to school for nothing. He said, this is how the student needs to be with the learner. Uh, the student needs to be with the teacher. He said, وَمَتَى تَكَبَّرَ الْمُتَعَلِّمُ أَنْ يَسْتَفِيدَ مِنْ غَيْرِ مَوْصُوفٍ بِالتَّقَدُّمْ فَهُوَ جَاهِلٍ He said, if a person refuses to study or to benefit from the teacher, when they say, oh, I can't, I'm not going to benefit anything from this person. فَهُوَ جَاهِلٍ Know that this person is ignorant. Know that this person is ignorant. 
said, لِأَنَّ الْحِكْمَةِ ضَالَّةُ الْمُؤْمِنِ أَيْنَمَا وَجَدَهَا أَخَذَهَا Because wisdom is like the lost item of a believer. Wherever they find it, they take it. Right? The Prophet ﷺ said, الْحِكْمَةُ ضَالَّةُ الْمُؤْمِنِ Wisdom and knowledge is the lost item of every believer. Guys, if you lost your keys, would you be like, oh, well, you know, I checked everywhere. Yes, he checked the bathroom. They might be there. Maybe when you made wudu, you dropped them. Like, la, the bathroom is not just. I'd rather lose my keys than find, than go into the bathroom. Habibi, <laughs> where's your mind, right? What are you like? Did I come by this? No. If if there's hikmah there, if there's something of benefit to you, then take it. So uh, a true student takes from where they can find benefit. That's what he's saying. وَلْيَدَعَ الْرَأْيَهُ لِرَأْيِ مُعَلِّمِهِ فَإِنْ خَطَأَ الْمُعَلِّمْ أَنْفَعَ لِلْمُتَعَلِّمْ فَإِنَّ Look at this. This is very deep. He said, وَلْيَدَعَ رَأْيَهُ لِرَأْيِ مُعَلِّمِهِ And let him leave his opinion, or her opinion, to the opinion of the teacher. Allah, this is not like blind following. But listen what he's saying. فَإِنَّ خَطَأَ الْمُعَلِّمْ أَنْفَعَ لِلْمُتَعَلِّمْ مِنْ صَوَابِ نَفْسِهِ do you get it? Because the mistake of a teacher is more beneficial from a begin, for a beginner student of knowledge than the correct opinion of the beginner student of knowledge. Who wants to explain this to me? How is this possible? He said, you know how some students, they're just starting to study ilm, like, oh, Allah, my teacher said this is that. But my opinion, what I think is right, is boom, boom, boom. Type, you might be right. But you being correct is more harmful to you than following your teacher in the wrong opinion. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because following your teacher in the wrong opinion, or the opinion that has less evidence, طبعاً, we don't say wrong, يعني, is just off. We're saying wrong as in like, maybe there's more evidences from the Quran and Sunnah for what you found, than the, the opinion that the teacher adapted, or adopted, right? Because if you're correct, it's going to inherit your arrogance, in a sense that you're better and more learned than the teacher, hence making you reject and refuse ilm and knowledge. But if you accept from the teacher, even their khata, until you're capable of deciphering, then guess what? It's going to give you humbleness and humility. وقال الشافعي رحمه الله for those of you who like uh, poetry he said أأنثر درا بين سارحة النعم أأنظم منثورا لراعية الغنم ومن منح الجهال علما أضاعه ومن منع المستوجبين فقد ظلم okay so he's saying I'm spreading I'm spreading precious uh, these precious gems to you right and I'm and I'm putting them in, in forms of poetry uh, for those who are shepherds of sheep. Okay, for those who are shepherds. He said, وَمَنْ مَنَحَ الْجُهَّالَ عِلْمًا أَضَاعَهُ And he's talking to the teachers. He's talking to the educators. He's saying, if you give the ignorant people knowledge, then you're losing your knowledge. And if you're depriving, وَمَنْ مَنَعَ الْمُسْتَوْجِبِينَ فَقَدْ ظَلَمْ And if you're depriving the ones who deserve it, then you're committing oppression against them. And every time a teacher is teaching someone who doesn't deserve it, they're distracting themselves from teaching someone who does deserve it. They could be putting their time in that. That's why, wallahi, ulama do not waste time. I remember um, when I was in Riyadh back in 2013, I had the, the, the pleasure to study with one of the great scholars there. His name is Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al Tarifi. So, Sheikh Abdul Aziz was one of my mashayikh. Uh, I think he's in, in prison right now. And he's been since I was in Riyadh. Right? He was on house arrest and we used to try and go visit him. But he was, it was tough to get to, subhanAllah. You know what he did? I remember sitting with him, me and a couple of students of knowledge who were friends of mine. And I told him, Ya Sheikh, um, you know, we want to study. Yani we have a, a path and certain books we want to study with you, inshallah. But if there's some time that you have to study with us, then bismillah, yani we can do it. You know what the Sheikh said? 
Oh, what time? Uh, no, he didn't say any of that. That's not Sheikh Abdul Aziz. You know, Sheikh Abdul Aziz, he understood this poem. He doesn't waste his time with people who don't want to study. He doesn't waste his time with people who don't have the motivation. You know, he said, he said, okay. He said, we have to study this book, this book, and this book. And we have to study all of them together simultaneously. And we start tomorrow Fajr. You come, you start reading, and you have to memorize this and this much from each book. And this is how you read it. He gives a whole methodology of how to read the book too. He has his own strategy. And I told him, Sheikh, يعني, you're doing it already. يعني, tomorrow Fajr, مرة واحدة, you know, like right after Fajr. <laughs> you know, the Sheikh is like, he said, what I discovered is that most people, they get stuck on the first road bump. They get stuck. He said, if you're truly, a lot of people, they want to come to him just to say, Darast ma Sheikh Abdul Aziz. They want to come to him and sit and listen, heck, like, and they're like, oh, I studied with the Sheikh a year. No, I mean, with Sheikh Abdul Aziz, you're not going to study at all unless you got the good for it. Yeah, and if you hear somebody who said he studied with him, then you know this person, he knows a little something because not anyone, like, just goes and sits with him. Taban, the Sheikh, he had a, and you know, when you study with a teacher, you have to follow the teacher's way. So he told us, um, one of the books that he told us to study was Jama' Al-Ulum Al-Hikam for Ibn Rajab al hanbali So he said, you have to read the hadith and the whole entire sharh. And then write down on your notebook everything you remember from the sharh, from the explanation. He said, but you can never go back to that sharh. I said, what do you mean, Shaykh? Yani, I want to be able to go back and read my book. He's like, no. He said, you cannot go back and read it, ever. If you want to be my student, you never go back and read anything. And I told him, Shaykh, then how, how will I remember? He's like, you will. <laughs> Just do it. And wallah. He said, he said you're going to see how much you don't know when you do this. So I did... The, exactly what he said. I read, I think it's like 30 or 40 pages. The, had, the sharh of the first hadith in that book. إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ So um, I wrote down from 40 pages, three quarters of a page of notes from my memory. That's all I could remember from the 40 pages. And then I went back to the shaykh. And I'm like, yeah, shaykh, all I remember is this much. He's like, then that's how much you retained after you read it. But what about... A year from now, I'm like probably a quarter of a page. He's like, what about 10 years from now? I'm like, man, I'll forget the hadith itself, you know. I don't know, Shia. And he's like, you see, if you're driving down a one-way road, he said, if you're driving down a two-way road, let's say you're here, right? What's the street? Centennial, right? And you're going down, and you know it's two ways. And you're looking for a store. You're looking to the right, you're looking to the left. And you know, if you don't see it, right? If you don't see it, what are you going to do? You're going to make a U-turn, come back and look for it again. If you still don't see it, you're going to come back and look for it again. It's an address, you have it, you know it's somewhere there, but you, you didn't see it. He said, the only reason you didn't see it is because you knew you're going to have a chance to come back. That's what he said. He said, what if I told you this street is a one-way? And there's no U-turn. For a long, long time, there's no U-turn. And there's a lot of traffic behind you. Right? How would you let this place pass? And you need to get to it for something important and critical in your life. I'm like, La wallah, I'm not moving. I'm not moving until I, 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 you know, I find it and I park in front of it. Tell me to know. He's like, now I want you to read with this mindset. I went back to read, and now we're reading. And every time I pass by a gem, I'm like, la wallah, I'm, never, I'm not going to let this pass. I'm going to remember. Then I would read it. Then I'll read it again. And I'll think about it. And I'll let it resonate. Then I'll, I'll continue reading. And then I told the sheikh, Tayyib sheikh, yani right now I'm, I'm writing like a page. You know, a little bit more, a page and a half. Okay, what, like... When am I? He's like, eventually, you'll start reading a book and remembering the whole thing. And mind you, 
Sheikh Abdul Aziz, he has photographic memory. He has photographic memory. He never told anyone how much he memorizes. Okay? But one of our friends, my Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmed Shubair, you could look him up on YouTube. He is one of my close friends in Riyadh. He memorizes 21 books of hadith. Taban, the Quran, he did that in like three months. Okay? Then he memorized 21 books of hadith. And he's like, he's like the Google of hadith. Actually, before yani the Sheikh finishes telling him the hadith, he'll tell you who narrated it, where, what page, and then he'll say the whole hadith and different narrations and, and the grade of it. Everything. So I told him, uh, did you see, sit with Sheikh Abdul Aziz? He was in my house. We're eating. And he was eating, you know, lahma or He was just he was chilling. He was talking to us about everything, you know. And I'm like, Ahmed, yani inta, you eat like us, you talk like us. But how do you memorize this so much? He's like, well, I did just mean Allah. I didn't mean Allah. Yani. He's like, I was just born now. I'm like, were you like that even until like high school? Did you know you had this gift? He's like, no. He's like, in high school, I was a B student. I'm like, but you memorize everything. He's like, no, in high school, I didn't memorize. He's like, I was too distracted. <laughs> Remember the point? He's like, I was distracted. He said, but when I met a sheikh and he told me how to memorize, that is when I started memorizing. The sheikh told me, do five pages. He said, I did them in 10 minutes. I came back. He said, do 10 pages. He did them in 10 minutes. He came back. Do a juzo. He did it. Ya ilahi. He's gifted. In, in, in Medina, in, in, in Saudi, there was uh, this sheikh in Medina. His name was Yahya Al Yahya. You know, did you guys ever watch X Men? You remember that X Men movie a long time ago? I wouldn't be mentioning the X Men. But there was like a, a comic book that we read when we were kids. And then they made a, a, like a little cartoon show and then a movie about. There was this guy, his name was. Uh, uh, what's his name? The, the guy in the wheelchair? Um, Xavier. Xavier, how about this Xavier, whenever there's an X-Men, somebody with like crazy powers, he would, they would send them to Xavier so he could train them how to use it. How that exactly? How that Sheikh Yahya Yahya, he's like the Xavier, Ta'alm al-Hadith, right? <laughs> whenever they find a gifted student in Saudi Arabia, they send them to Medina, to Sheikh Yahya. Like Sheikh Yahya, take care of him. And Sheikh Yahya would teach him how to train him, how to memorize and how to, you know, what to memorize and how. We told him, Sheikh Ahmed, did you go to Sheikh Abdul Aziz? Was he impressed? With your memory? He said, La wallah, he wasn't impressed. <laughs> I told him how. He said, You just started. He's like, You still have the da'if is much more. You have to memorize all of that too. Ahmed only memorized the authentic hadith. So, uh, just to let you know how much dedication and commitment these scholars put. So, when we're talking about adab and akhlaq, I want you to imagine. A scholar like this. And then he's saying, Wait a minute. He's saying about the, the student of knowledge, they do not, they should not, they should not talk to the scholar in a disrespectful way. They should not mention another opinion of a scholar in front of them, they should not uh, cut them off in their, in, their, in their talks, but they should take from them and absorb from them whatever they can. Because each one is a pedestal. Each one is a level in seeking the reward of Allah. Now, listen to this hadith on Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who knows Abu Huraira? What's, what's Abu Huraira's name? And he, did his mom call him Abu Huraira when he was born? You know what Abu Huraira means, right? The father of what? The cat. And we know he's not the father of a cat, literally, right? We knew he had a cat, but what was his real name? Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr al dawsi exactly. Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr. We have to know, because he's one of the biggest narrators in, in, of our tradition. طيب. He said this hadith in Afat al-ilm wa bayan ulama al-su. He's talking about the evil or bad scholar. Now we talked about good scholars and how we need to respect them. But now the bad scholars, 
We call them ulama as He said, هم الذين قصدهم من العلم التنعم بالدنيا they, they just want the dunya with their knowledge. They don't want anything in the akhirah. وَالتَّوَصُّلْ إِلَى مَنْزِلَةٍ عِنْدَ أَهْلِهَا When they're seeking knowledge, all they're thinking of is the status they're going to receive by studying it. They don't have the akhirah in mind as much as they should have it. Doesn't mean they don't have partly the akhirah, but their primary reason is to get the dunya pedestal. What does Abu Hurairah say? He says, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ عِلْمًا مِمَّا يَنْبَغِي Whoever studies knowledge that Allah should be the intent of. And they only learn this ilm so that they could get something for the dunya. They don't care about it. They just want the dunya with this knowledge. They will not smell jannah on the day of judgment. Despite all the ilm they have, despite everything they spoke, despite everything they did, they will not smell Jannah yawm al-qiyamah nas'al Allah al-'afiyah wa Wa fi hadith akhar, there's another hadith. Man ta'allam al-'ilm liyubahi bihi al-'ulama. Whoever studies knowledge so that they can debate scholars with it. Aw yumari bihi al-sufaha. Or so that they can boast about it amongst the people who don't have it. أو يصرف به وجوه الناس or to make people look at him clicks, followers right, they just want to open a TikTok channel and have millions and millions of followers right, that's all they want, they want to learn علم. oh man, what can I drop on TikTok today yeah, this one got hits I'm going to talk about Dajjal every day for the next month because that's what that's where the hits are coming from right, that's all they care about, the views, the likes the follows no, no, astaghfirullah he said, فَهُوَ فِي النَّارِ And if the person just does this for these reasons, then they are in the hellfire. And Allah al-Afiyah wa And this shows us, ya jama'ah, this shows us how much we are surrounded with this toxic culture. Right? You open social media, and what do you find? What do you find? Find all types of stuff. But it's unfortunate now that you find a random person that has no ta'seel. They have no background in Islamic education. Tell them, name me your sheikh. He said, I studied on YouTube. You tell him, where is your ijazah? He's like, I don't know what an ijazah is, let alone having one. But they're, mashallah, loud. Du'at, they invite them, nas yatabarrakun bim. Like, oh, you know Fulan, you know Alan, you know this. Wallah, Allah guided me through. Alhamdulillah, they did their job, mashallah. But they're being put on these high pedestals. For what? Khalas, everybody needs to know their level, ya jama'ah. I know some of us get very excited. Some of us want to give ilm. Some of us want to teach. But know your status. Know your status. If you're going to be, if you want to be something big like that, then you have to have that ilm. Why? Because it's this ilm that's going to help you fix your heart in the process. If you cannot secure your heart, then don't expose it to this. Some people, they become slowly people of fatwa. Imagine, I've seen that. They ask questions. You look at the thread, and people are like asking uh, these social media scholars, Questions. And when I say social media scholars, I don't mean the big ulama or the ones that are educated, the ones that have background. No, these are these are ulama. These are scholars. I'm talking about random like brothers that mashallah, Allah bless them with the ability to speak. Allah bless them with the way to articulate. Or they're very good at editing and posting and you know, they're good at social media. They're good at understanding the algorithm. And they're being pushed out there and everybody knows them. He benefits from anyone. But do not put people on a pedestal that they don't belong in. Because all you're doing, ya akhi, you might think complimenting and liking is, is giving them, is giving them a, a boost. Yeah, keep going, man. You're doing good. I liked, I better. But you might be gassing that person up. You might be shooting them in the foot. You might be instilling arrogance in them. Let's give everyone their chance to thrive. Alhamdulillah, there's beneficial content. But don't be the one who instills that arrogance by overly complimenting the person. 
right? Somebody comes up. Yani, I, I get really aggravated. Somebody, like one time I was being presented, it's like one of our scholars from here, I'm like, wait, 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 I mean, what are you talking about? Where are you going with this? Why are you, Aslan, calling me a scholar? Do you even know what a definition of a scholar is? Wallahi, if, if people knew what a scholar is, they'll be shy to call people like me a student of knowledge even. Even a student. But because we're in such a vacuum, we're in such a vacuum today, we're in such need, that we need to say, like, you know, we need to be out. Someone like me needs to be teaching. Do you, do you understand? But it doesn't mean that we help shaitan on each other. Khalas, give everyone their respect, take their knowledge, but don't, yes, yeah, even a scholar, you shouldn't overly compliment in their, in their head. Even, you remember the beginning, the introduction of the book? Al-Shaykh, Al-Alim, Al-Abid, Al-Zahid, the Shaykh, the scholar, the worshiper, this, this, that. You know who wrote that? It wasn't the author. It was his students who wrote his book for him. Never would a scholar say about themselves that. Bil'ax, when you look at the manuscripts written by the scholars, what would they say? They say, Al-Faqir wa ilallah. The one who's poor. They say a uh, nakira, you know, the one who's, who's a negligent part of this. Head. Some scholars, they wouldn't even write. Some scholars didn't even write their name on their books. They took a book, they wrapped it up, and they threw it over a building. Someone found it, like, oh, this is filled with knowledge. They had to investigate and find out that he did it. <laughs> and then they wrote his name. Subhanallah. That's how our ulama were. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with, righteous, with good ilm with sound knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve us from the distractions that deter us from seeking proper knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us upon khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our progeny to being scholars of the ummah who act upon what they know. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the pains and the hardships and the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow help and assistance to enter to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a pivotal a moment and an awakening for the hearts of our, our believing brothers and bro sisters around the world, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, alleviate the pains and the hardships of our brothers and sisters in Sudan as well. May the fitan be alleviated and may the people who caused the fitan be destroyed and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, continue to guide this ummah to that which is best for it. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum.